Tell me, is it the day I made it? Feel like the world is over, don't know why I've been created. I've been under pressure, but never the lesson. No, nothing could measure. Feeling outdated, everybody in the creator. Feel like I'm automated, I'm motivated, I'm motivated. No, never faded, but abated. A visionary that made it as it escalated. I elevated and feel like I rated the game. Cause all of this, it just sounded the same in my mind.
I know you've been working hard, nine to five. The world is bringing you down. Just know you're not alone. So what you waiting for? Tonight I'm taking you up. Oh, get yourself ready. Let's hit the town. Kick a little old school and boogie down. We can dance all night. Oh, baby, work it on it. You got something special and they don't want it. Yeah, but you belong to me. You got something special to me. You do something special to me. You don't have to be insecure. Tonight is for losing all of the doubt. Yeah. Cause I know you're gonna be the one to stand out in the crowd. Oh. Get yourself ready, let's hit the town. Kick a little old school and boog it down. We can dance all night. Oh, baby, work it on it. You got something special and they don't want it, yeah. But you belong to me. If you could see you through my eyes, the perfect oh, baby. woman I've described is you, yeah. Cause you got something special to me. You do something special to me. I am a man Fighting with compassion built from all my sins I am afraid But I never let the fear take over me Figure out a way to take what's mine
wall of mass destruction I am a man Capable of love and affection I am a man Capable of laying down my Yes, I do, I'll overcome any amount of doubt uh, Because I've been so searching Look inside the mirror and I see a good person Living out my words, man, I've been researching Think deep but don't sink, I've been below the surface Looking back, a rolling stone Born a long way from here, I'm headed home Dance beneath the diamond sky, don't wanna die I just wanna live my life while I'm alive I'm never looking back, a rolling stone Born a long way from here, I'm headed home Dance beneath the diamond and this is what the inside of my mind sounds like Holding on to good times, I'm putting up my next ones Over and over, see everything is alright Got myself back to the center, feeling more me than ever You think that I'll be thinking more about the long run But lately I've been going crazy over one song Cause every word that's on this album mean the world to me Look literally, this shit ain't just, just a verse to me A lonely childhood, I learned to love the one I was alone with and when it came down to it, I found peace inside. I put it all together alive before I died. Yeah, see, once upon a time, in the middle of the night, I was following my headlights. And all I could see was 10 feet in front of me. But I just believed that there was a path. Here I am. Never looking back, a rolling stone. Born a long way from here, I'm headed home. Dance beneath the diamond sky, don't wanna die. I just wanna live my life while I'm alive. I'm never looking back. Stone. Born a long way from here, I'm headed home Dance beneath the diamond sky, don't wanna die I just wanna live my life while I'm alive It's like dwelling on the past, I just simply see no need Look inside my wants and you will simply see no greed Give more than I take, you know I take that shit to my grave Moving on my dreams, you know I put that shit on my name Lost inside the sound and you know all my dues have been paid Learn my best advice from my worst mistake, huh? See clearly even when the vision blurry I'ma know my songs well and I'ma make sure that you hear me Look up. Yeah. Their minds, their hearts, all torn apart. Yeah. 
you don't, then somebody else will. Yo, they need it just to hear it. They might let somebody touch them. Uh. And some use sex to get love. And some use love to get sex. And some use sex to get the bread that they need to pay rent. Cause nobody gonna do it for the kids. So tell me what's the price of life? Some children are learning how to pull tricks while others learning to ride bikes in. This right here, but under our noses. How we didn't notice, but now that we know this, expose the darkness. If we the light of Christ, then we gotta stop taking our reality in doses. It's your mother, your sister, your daughter, pray you see her. Cause heroes ain't for sale, and the body shouldn't be evil. Oh, no. is it all gonna change? Slavery still remains. Still remains. Their minds, their hearts, all torn apart. Chains, yeah. Your pain, your scars. We'll carry to your freedom is ours. Destination. Maybe you don't know what you got till it's gone now. Maybe you don't know what you got till it's gone now. Maybe you don't know. 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 Maybe you don
Change, always be the same. Driving slow on purpose up in my fast lane. Then again, how do you reason with the heathen if perception is reality? Perceive that I be leaving. I know the reason you need something to believe in. God, she's the time to kick a sleeping dog. Raw, when I eat the beat like a freak, I'm always cheek bleak. I'm turning the other cheek. I don't wanna be the one to tell you it's over. I'm wise enough to see the sun. I'm finally. Alongside Wolf, and this is the final day of the preseason of the 2016 GSL. That's right. Everything gets really real after this. We're going to have 30 more Coda spots to distribute later on, but the second one that's being seeded will be decided today. We've got four great players, two Terrans and two Proosses. They're battling now for that final spot to skip, you know, the shenanigans of getting into Coda S through Coday and the qualifiers and all that. They've yeah. already made it this far, and all they need to do now is win two best of fives to make it straight into Code S. And that's really important to be able to do that. Like, they're they're very close right now. Yeah, this is really hard to do, but going through the Code A qualifiers, Code B as we call it sometimes, very difficult, as you well know. You've been yeah. to a lot of those, seen the heartbreak, seen top-level pros get knocked out there sometimes. And then when you hit Code A, you're going to be playing one of the best players in the world already. Yeah. Uh, and then it gets even more difficult in, in the following seasons, of course, as you face the players who fell out of CODES. And to mm -hmm. get into CODES is such a, a momentous task. Everyone who you have to face to kind of get in there is so incredibly difficult in CODES. It's a hard tournament. CODES is like the hardest tournament, but then getting there is even what makes it the hardest tournament. You know, if you're in CODES, it's a legendary symbol. Uh, you know, that you are in CODES. You've, you've made it that far. You've built, you know, such a career yeah. that you can get there. If you can qualify for Code S at this stage of StarCraft II, you are basically one of the greatest gamers ever to have lived. Uh, you know, whether you go out in the round of 32, 02, 02, or you win the whole thing, like, you're there. That's it. This is the hardest, most prestigious StarCraft tournament in the world. So, yeah, and I mean, I, it goes without saying, StarCraft is by far the hardest eSport that there is by a million miles. Okay, you can't blame your teammates when you lose in this game. It's your no, fault. You absolutely cannot. And hey, the, the GSL process of getting into CODES has been even more difficult. You can't, there's no more seeds from like MLG, you know, we're totally beyond those days. Like, mm -hmm. you earn your way in, we're starting with a new season, everyone is fighting their way in, and that's really cool. I feel like it really means something to be in the first season of CODES. Yeah, it certainly does, and uh, as we see guys, well, this was, um, 
This was yesterday's bracket, so not sure why that's up there. But uh, we had Young Chicken Deer win, and then we had Ty and Bunny win. So those are going to be our two matches here today. Yes, two TBT or yeah, one TBT and one PVP, mm -hmm. and then uh, the finals will be a TVP no matter what. We don't know which Terrence or which Frost is just yet. We've got three best of fives tonight, though. All of the best of fives, no best of threes. That's right. And that makes it a lot better, of course, as well. As you see, our TBT is going to be first, and then our PVP, and then, of course, the finals. We are giving away a lot here, as you see. We're going to give out five limited edition Legacy of the Voids, five Legacy of the Voids, and hamburger. Yeah. Now, there will be about at least 42 hamburgers. I know it doesn't say, but you need to get down here fast if you want one of those, because, uh, you know, those hamburgers <laughs> aren't going to stay hot forever either. Yeah, no, you don't want a cold hamburger, probably, right? Yeah. They probably don't taste as good. And uh, if you've never had a bulgogi burger, burger before, it's a great experience to uh, experience Is that it? today. Do you think they'll have any vegetarian hamburgers for me? I don't think so, Artosis. No, I don't either. I won't even be angry. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there, there's. this is going to be a great day. Free food, plenty of raffles going on. And at the end, we have some announcements about GSL. So that's always a lot of fun as well. Yeah, more details will be revealed of how the rest of the seasons for the rest of the year are going to work. Uh, who do you favor going, like, who do you think will be in this finals? Okay, so uh, I'm feeling probably Ty over Bunny, but that could definitely go either way. I think Myungshik will for sure take out Deer. Uh, I think Myungshik has some really cool uh, PvP builds. Like he he kind of destroyed Zest. Yeah. Uh, who like the previous week destroyed Hurricane, who's definitely one of the best Legacy players too. So like. His, his PvP, I think, is going to be pretty hard to stop for Deer tonight. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really true. I feel like Deer has also been somewhat weak in PvP and Heart of the Swarm. It's a totally new expansion, but let's talk about this TBT a little bit because it's what's coming up on the forefront. As you can see, TY beat Hurricane 2-0, but before that, he beat Sulky 2-0, two very difficult opponents to face in the round of 16 and the round of 8. And this guy is no slouch. He's been overseas, he's traveled the world, and he's already got a head start in Legacy of the Void. Certainly a, a very strong player. Kind of not a legend, but very top-end StarCraft 1 pro as well. And uh, I'm really excited for him. Everyone's been talking about TUI. Everyone thinks that this guy definitely is one of the players that looks amongst, like, if you have to name five guys that you think look just fantastic in Legacy of the Void, I think he's definitely one of them. And with Flash's retiring, I feel like he's got big shoes to fill as yeah. KT Rollster's number one on Terran now, so it definitely would be great for him to get a great head start going into Pro even next year uh, well, to build that reputation. You know what? He's used to that role. Like, this guy has stepped into the shoes of bigger Terrans in the past in StarCraft 1 as he started playing when he was like 12, so he can do it here again. Now, Bunny, his opponent, we saw this guy sort of come into a little bit more skill, a little bit more success towards the end of the life of Heart of the Swarm. He was starting to be fielded more often in Pro League. He had made it to a few uh, GSLs, and I think he even qualified for Star League once. He got better and better, and now we're going to a new expansion. And I feel like he's got a lot to prove. He didn't have as easy of a road here. Uh, he beat Life, he yeah. beat Losira, uh, and he won both of those two once. We had a bit of a harder time than TY to get here. Well, both his opponents played very, very well during that, but Bunny showed us that, at least in TBZ, he's looking really, really fantastic. Just a solid play, uh, great branches off of things like Three Racks Reaper and just amazing Three Racks Reaper play as well. Like doesn't even necessarily cheese with it, just keeps on pressure so late into the game. It was really quite a pleasure to watch him play. Absolutely. And his TBT will be tested today. It's gonna be the first time we have this matchup with Buddy. Now here are our maps. Starting off with Laralite Crest. Yeah. Um well, I mean, big four-player map to start out. It is a mirror matchup, so we can't go like too in-depth about uh, you know what each of these maps means for for the way it has to be played. Uh, generally, it seems that uh, you know Siege Tank, Medivac, Marine is going to be the mid to late game in TVT. Just who's going to be better at positioning and repositioning these all the time? Yeah, it's interesting that um, this, these maps were chosen by whoever had the most points picked first, and then it was just kind of a rotation of picks. Prioritaris was not picked by either. It was just the last map to fill in the spot. And neither of them really wanted to play on that map. It looks like they kind of saved that for last. Yeah. I think it's the only thing you could take from this map pick. Yeah. Well, Prioritaris is like, that's a weird map, right? With that many gold bases out there, it's, it's difficult to to know how greedy or not greedy or aggressive to be there. Well, looks like we are getting ready to jump into this first game. It is going to be Laralac Crest, but before we start, guys, get out there and let people know. The GSL preseason finals is on. It's going to be great tonight. We even have a translator here for the interviews later on. So 
We are going all out tonight, giving out hamburgers, games, all sorts of fun stuff. All right, our toast is what looks like it is time for TY versus Bunny. This is Terran versus Terran. Game number one will be on Laralac Crest, and it is up and loaded. So it is finally time to start game number one here Welcome at the round of four GSL. of week two of the this GSL preseason. Let's make it hot. Thick. Here in the top, or the bottom right, our blue Terran player from KT Rolster. It is TY. It's TY indeed. Oh, he came from the Netherlands. <laughs> and he came, he said, it says literally that he came to see TY win. So that's why he's here. And Bunny is his opponent to the top left in red from CJ Entis. It's been looking fantastic. Certainly has. I'm really impressed to see a player like Bunny. One of my favorite things in StarCraft watching players grow is when you see a player that stays on a team for a really long time and doesn't find massive success for a while, mm -hmm. but still sticks around in the scene and eventually makes it. That makes me so happy. It's like you finally made it. You are finally yeah. actually made your mark at StarCraft. And that actually happens like a, a good amount. Like for instance, look at Beal's recent success. This guy has been grinding out as a pro gamer since like 2011. Yeah. I mean, and what a, what a wonderful thing to see him become absolutely unequivocally one of the best Zergs in the world. And Bunny, maybe this is gonna happen to him now. You know, he's, uh, it, was, it was actually really interesting because Brendan brought up when I was casting with him that, uh, you know, Bunny, when you think of Bunny, you kind of think of, oh, okay, yeah, this guy's really good at dropping medevacs, but you know, doesn't, close out the game that well. But here's the thing, like, that type of skill transitions very well to Legacy of the Void, and he's had success so far. We'll, we'll have to see if he becomes one of these big names in the future now. Yeah, and that specific point uh, that Brenda made is really relevant because um, closing out the game, that sort of skill is something that you get with experience usually more than, you know, the talent part is what is the dropping, the multitasking, um, I find. Yeah, sure. And, uh We'll just have to see. I mean, here's here's some data. Of course, TY has been a completely different caliber from Bunny uh, throughout StarCraft II, throughout esports and video games in general. Yeah. Probably even better than at Legend of Zelda. But <laughs> this is this is a new game, okay? And uh, yeah, he he won he won versus uh, Bunny in the playoffs, which is really important. He also won uh, in that Casper qualifier where he, actually TY went very far in the tournament, nearly made it to the finals. So. That's all hard to swarm, though, mm -hmm. and that's in the past. Indeed. Rightfully so. Legacy of the Void, so, so much better. Right, you know, a little a push look. here, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of a pressure coming up. He does have a full wall in, so has plenty of time to react to this well. Has three Marines and a Hellion of his own here. Yep, just needs to be careful about splitting versus Ooh. the grenade, and he did not there. He lost a Marine. Yeah, a little bit sloppy there by TY. Uh, and we do have another grenade being thrown out right there. Just a single Hellion left over, but two Marines do pop out, so should be fine holding this off now. Yeah, losing that first Reaper <laughs> means it's basically a no-go. Now, we do have a Cyclone on the way, so that's gonna be something that you can easily push everything out with. Nice little counter uh, pressure here by TY. A little bit of harassment with his Reaper. Getting a good scout going as well. Yeah, he's just gonna come in here, even gets two SCBs so far. Might even end up getting a third one here. He definitely will, it looks like. He's gonna drop another grenade. Doesn't get that third SCB, but oh, there he goes. <laughs> we'll actually micro his way out of this here. This is uh, actually really starting to add up. Look at this. This is like insane amounts of damage right now. And that's what you get for having your Hellions across the map. He started his Cyclone, which takes a long time to come out, so he finally gets those units back home. Five SCVs with that single Reaper, like, that's... That's way more than the pressure of two Hellions and two Reapers accomplished. Yeah, seriously. Now TY kind of having a little bit of map control out in the middle here. Will he stay behind that grass? No, he's going to just walk forward. And oh, a great move indeed. Is Cyclone going to lock on? A grenade is thrown to try to stop him. Oh, oh. and that sucks. <laughs> That's going to be a, a lock on counter-wise, and there's no escape from that. It's 
I feel like the, the unit you can compare it most to is the Phoenix. Once yeah. you lock on, there's no escape. The Cyclone, Phoenix versus Phoenix, the same way. Cyclone versus Cyclone is kind of unforgiving for sure, like that. So, well, that's uh, just a little bit over the top there with it, with that uh, Cyclone push. But still, TY in good shape, I would say, having killed those five SCVs. He's up about five SCVs now. Now, he has a very strong Marine push with a Cyclone coming up now, but that doesn't mean a lot of units are missing for this drop that's coming around the south side. So let's see if he can actually handle that while he's being aggressive here. Uh, this could definitely work out, especially if he focuses down that Cyclone very quickly. Yeah, he's trying to lock on with his own Cyclone. Doesn't quite get it there. And, oh, yeah, does have to back up for the time being. Imagine if he hadn't lost the other Cyclone, how powerful this would be right now. Now, this Cyclone is here to defend with a bunch of SCVs, so he should be able to lock this down pretty easily. Even got two Marines to help out. Um, all that TY can really do here is salvage the meta bag, or excuse me, a bunny can do, but this TY push is much more difficult to hold. Yeah, indeed, and the Cyclone actually messing up a little bit here, stuck behind those Marines. He does want to do the best he can to continue to get damage out of this Cyclone. Does lock on right now and does a lot of damage. But look at this great Cyclone micro, and he actually gets out. Yeah, and this uh, this will actually force a repair here. That's how much damage he did. He's going to have to yeah. send some SCVs to stop that from burning. And look at that, five more SCVs dead as well. Really nicely done here by TY. By the way, Cyclone looks really cool. It's it like really a very does. cool looking unit. It really, really does. Yeah. I, I love the way that it, it has like it, the turrets on the side of it look, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 like a missile turret with wheels, I think is what Taste is called. <laughs> it looks like, it, yeah, it, it basically is. But it looks like, um, I don't know if you ever played a Game Boy Advance game called Advance Wars. Kind of reminds me of the rocket unit in that game a little bit. Okay. Uh, just sort of, kind of. I don't yeah. know if that means anything to anybody out there, but... <laughs> I'm sure it does. Looks like the stealth unit in Star Fox Assault as well, but <laughs> no one knows about that <laughs> except no, me. I guess not. Um, but we do see uh, Stim is much faster ahead for TY as well, which gives him a lot more ability to pressure early on here. Yeah, not just that. He's getting double eBay instead of single, so he's going to have an additional upgrade there on his Marines. Things are just looking very good for TY, and that's kind of reflected. He has more SCVs. He has more army. Everything is looking really great. In fact, he even has map control. Yeah. It's basically going to take a, a lot of patience right now for uh, Bunny to come back in this game. He's going to have to out-micro TY and, and basically hold off some pressure and catch up. Taking a third base is going to be very difficult as well with this kind of pressure. Now look at this. I love this. Oh my god, it's so handsome. Look at this handsome, handsome play here by TY. Just running out with these two Cyclones, picking off all sorts of stuff. And he's got a medevac here, so they can just get away. Yep. I don't care about this, but look at that. Good control. Oh, medevac goes medevac. down. Oh yeah. no, it's got 35 health Oh left. geez, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay I well. heard an explosion, so I thought it died. But Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> Um, just barely surviving there, but really nice micro. Once the medevac was locked onto, he knew that the cyclone couldn't kill his own cyclone, so he just went full aggressive there. We did have four SCVs at TY's base die during this. Again, we do have a, a new observer here, still getting better. I think everyone can agree it's, he's improved a lot since day one of preseason. But uh, yeah, it takes a while to become a good observer. You don't just learn it overnight. Yeah, not a hundred percent sure how that went down, but I do got to say I'm I I'm just falling in so much love with the way TY has been playing. Like, uh, in, in each matchup. No, what the Korean commentators are highlighting very heavily here is because whatever happened to that depot occurred, uh, a huge supply block here for Bunny. Mm -hmm. For a long time, he had to make two depots, so he's lost a lot of production cycles, even dropping now a call-down supply. And that means that the army supply is even getting larger here for uh, TY, who's now securing a third base. He has the double upgrades, as you mentioned. He's going to have combat shields in just a moment. Yeah, I mean... It don't forget the 1-1 one, one upgrade as well. It's 1-1 one, one against 1-0, yeah. oh, and when Marines are fighting against Marines, that makes a big difference. Like, if Siege Shanks are hitting, it's much less so, but if it's just Marine versus Marine, the 1-1s one, will clean up the 1-0s. Yeah. Uh-oh. Two oh. bedbacks on the way back here get caught. That's pretty huge. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal right there. Well, right now we do have Bunny kind of moving down. He does have a Siege Shanks in uh, dropships. Now, this is one of the coolest things about how TBT Marine Tank works is that you can basically set your tanks up to get a volley and then pick them up instantly like this. Yeah, There's a slight nice. delay, but it's it's almost instantaneous. So your opponent has to be really Johnny on the spot with Mike Ring against that. Yeah, it's certainly the case. And uh, as we see, that did a lot of damage. Took out his Cyclone, took out a few Marines as well. Really bruised him up. All right, so he's going to actually try to aggressively push up here next to these rocks. Much harder to engage that with Marines with the rocks you know, in front of them like that. I think TY should be able to hold this position, though. 
He also has yeah. two sensor towers, so he can see any movement. Mm -hmm. I'm not imagining him actually dying here. Uh, he's got to be careful, though. And in fact, he picked up a Marine with one of those medevacs. You've got to be careful about stuff like that, because then you can't pick up the Siege Tank anymore. That's true. Ooh, this is going to be a risky engagement here. I don't agree with this one for Bunny. He's just going to walk into this concave of Siege Tanks. And this might actually just be game-ending losses here for Bunny. Yeah, this definitely did not work out. GG, TY takes game number one. Uh, but, you know, it, it makes sense that Bunny was trying to push the issue. He had already gotten behind in several ways, as you mentioned, the supply block. But that came after he's lost 10 additional SCVs. That, and at that point, he's down an upgrade and a base. He's only on two base against three for TY. So he's kind of behind in every way. I, I think he had to try to make something happen there. Yeah, uh, I have to agree. And it, it wasn't like he made a huge mistake with how he was trying to pressure. It's just that... As it was since Wings of Liberty, Marine Tank is the matchup where things can go the worst in the fastest amount of time. I feel that any matchup, of any unit composition, you mess up that engage once, there's no retreat, there's no escape, and everything you ever built, like the whole game is dead, yeah. and you type GG in a second. I mean, <laughs> you have to be really careful with this, and because you're carrying the siege tanks around as well, if, if those tanks are get controlled one way wrong, the medevac gets stimmed down without the damage being done. It's a very fragile unit composition, and you have to be really careful with how you move it. Yeah, that is so the case. Uh, one thing I want to point out about the early game, and just like TY's play in general, he, I love his usage of Cyclones in every way. I love his defensive use of them. I feel like he's more on the spot with where they should be all the time. I love his his little bits of pressure and harassment, the fact that he was able to pick off, you know, a, a Spy Depot, a Viking, you know, a couple of Marines and stuff like that. Just some really great moves. It feels like he really understands this new unit, and in two of the matchups, it's really helping him out. Yeah, I mean, he's using it. He's He knows how to use it in coordination with vision, which is the most important thing with it, I feel, sometimes. Like, we saw the medevac yeah. chase the Viking because that's what gives him vision. That's how he finishes off the You don't the see that Viking. every day, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> medevac chasing a Viking. But, uh, yeah, very, very well said with that. And I'm loving that. I'm interested to see if he continues to do some of these little cyclone pressure type strategies. Well, StarCraft fans, it's time for set number two. The map is Dusk Towers. See if Bunny can tie things up here. TY looking very strong so far in this matchup. Looks like the map is loaded. We're going to jump into game number two right here, right now. This is the Down in the bottom left, looking fantastic once again, our Blue Terran. It is TY. And his opponent, spawning oppositely, cross spawns in red, is Bunny on the team, CJ Entis. And we are going to see a variation of builds. He's going to go for a CC first versus. Um, it looks like just to be a gasless one racks expand. Okay. Well, I, I would say as far as a uh, gasless one racks against a CC first, definitely I would prefer to be the CC first player. Again, I haven't played like a bunch of TVTs, but just look at it. There's no way you're going to get any actual damage done. Yeah, without gas, yeah. it's certainly the better way. I think the fear is definitely going to be Reapers. Oh, getting some hot six oh, with your burger? That's the way. Hamburgers all over the place. That's a Big Mac right there. Whoa. So, you, know, you guys come down. Hurry up, though, if you haven't come yet. you got to rush in here. The Africa CEO's even getting a burger. Oh, and Mr. Che is right next to him there, too. Everyone's getting burgers, Wolf. Yeah. Someone might even bring you up a burger. Who knows? It could happen. You know, I would enjoy that. Yeah. But I, th I think the reason, the only reason why you would want to have a barracks before CC in this case is just in case of like proxy reapers, just yeah. so you can defend that. Yeah, I mean that's that's a real build, and uh, you know Bunny is definitely someone that Shoni really likes to go for reapers, at least in some other matchups. So I, I'm totally cool with Ty doing that. He might have looked at that game and said, "Oh, okay, I feel like I'm just kind of better than you at this matchup, so I'll just take a slightly safer build." And I think that little alterations like that. 
are really a great way to play StarCraft 2. I agree, and his transition here after scouting with his SCV is knowing that he's behind, seeing that the barracks was late of Bunny, he knew it was CC first, so he, instead of taking his gases, sank the extra mineral income into a third CC, mm -hmm. which can then give him triple meals. Oh, look the at burgers. everybody in there. Burger. Take a bite, take a big bite. Do it. That's a thumbs up. That's not a bite. Come on, do He's it. Like, I don't want you to do it. Yeah, yeah, you're the man. All right. <laughs> Sick. See, this is so fun at GSL, man. We have such a great time. Uh, if you're ever in Korea, definitely drop by the studio. Watch some great StarCraft. We have, like, it's a surprising amount that, that free food is given out of the studio. And very surprising about how often things like free hot six are given out like those that's actually quite regular but yeah and uh oftentimes as well i mean if you're a regular watcher we will tell you guys before and like we did yesterday that there yeah. will in fact be food so yeah like a lot of special days um things are given out but um anyways i mean it's a good time anyone will tell you how much is true now this scv looks a bit suspicious because it's coming over here around the same time the factory is finishing now, a proxy liberator would be a bit crazy. He might actually <laughs> just be waiting to scout the third base. Mm. I think that that would probably be what he's looking for here. It's like, what time are you going to take this third base right now? I mean, it is TY, so anything goes. But yeah, there's the starport at home. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, TY looks like uh, he's in a totally fine position. He's only down like an SCV. He's, his tech, I guess, is just slightly slower. Like, eh, a little bit more than slightly. but. That's okay. He's he's totally fine. He opened safely, and uh, the game is pretty normal. And he will get an SCB lead. Now uh, that's very interesting. I yeah. think I know exactly why he did that. I like to build that bunker there, right? It doesn't make too much sense, but I think he wanted to know exactly how many Marines there were. And that's you're not, a good way to tell. A lot of players are not going to have the the presence of mind to be like, there is no way that this bunker is real and only send one SCB, right? Like that's. Basically never going to happen. Yep. Or it, it is going to happen, but maybe not in this in this match. And one of the reasons on why, too, is for the reason why he had to send those Marines is this scan right here is really the first scouting information that Bunny has gotten all mm -hmm. game. So he he really has no idea like what the build is or what's going on. So it could have been a really heavy push that he actually could have yeah. died to. So absolutely, he he really he kind of forced him into that. So it's kind of cool. But uh. That's, that's my guess on that anyways. But here we are. We have a Cyclone down here waiting for any incoming Banshees. Or, it, you know, whatever. What may have you, whether it be a Medivac, a Banshee, a Liberator. I guess there's all sorts of ways to harass with every race now. Yeah, that's true. It is going to be Cloak Banshee as the choice of harass, though. Um, that's why this Raven is coming out here. And it will be ready by the time that uh, the Banshee arrives. Mm -hmm. And auto turrets have been changed in this expansion as well, and they can be quite strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, everything runs out a lot quicker for the Raven, but that's probably a good thing. Now, here comes that Cloak Banshee, and I don't think he actually has a scan, so he's going to have to bring that Raven down. Yeah, he just dropped some mules. And 43 seconds, or 43 energy on one of the CCs, but already four SCVs down. Wow, this is actually doing a lot of damage here. And look at this gets away as well just perfectly and here comes the second banshee oh, really good harassment here by bunny taking out already seven scbs and everything just so far out of position luckily for ty he had the state of mind to throw a turret down immediately realizing there is very likely more than one banshee but uh everything gets away his cyclone uh defense just not cutting it this time yeah and that actually gives him an scb deficit with the tech deficit he had earlier it's a bit rough he does have the higher marine count currently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure at where Stim is for these two because the second I thought of it, the unit tab came up. Okay, so Stim is actually pretty similarly timed, so he's not in as bad of a place as I yeah. thought he'd be. Um, TY does have the 1-1 one -one as opposed to just the 1-0, -oh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind as well, and the seed chain count looks to be about the same. So it's a pretty close game still, but I got to say I like the fact that there are two Banshees out on the map for Bunny. That's something that he can always poke in with and do slight harassment with. It's a permanent upgrade, you know? Yeah. Uh, there are some upgrades in StarCraft that are temporary, but Cloak is one of those upgrades that you could use at 20, 30 minutes in the game if need be. So Yeah, seriously, you have you have a long-term serious girlfriend. Don't get her a diamond. Get her Cloak. That's right. Cloak is forever. Cloak is forever. <laughs> More than diamonds, even. Yeah. All right, well, this was an engagement that was ill-fated for Bunny from the start mm. because uh, the two siege tanks were there. 
Let's see if TY can find an angle to harass the main base here. The buildings are not really on the edge, so he's actually going to have to go deep if he wants to find damage. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, Wolf, that uh, this is, you can tell, too, he kind of took him away from the edge to make sure that didn't happen. Now, a nice little chase down by Bunny here. Uh oh this is scary. He needs to get those tanks like away from your ASAP. And, in fact, does pick him up, and he will get out of here. Still Ooh. trying to be a little bit fancy. And that was pretty fancy. He got a volley before he escaped. Yeah. It's kind of a cute move there by TY. Really Ooh. trying to abuse that. I'm really liking TY's control in all these matchups we've seen him in so far in Legacy. This match will finally be removed okay. from the table. But still, uh, you know, like we were talking about before, that Banshee it just keeps popping in, and it seems like just a little bit more useful than the Cyclone in this case. But we'll see what TY can get done with these Cyclones now that it's getting later into the game. Now, as Observer is highlighting both Banshees are off the map, so he doesn't have to worry about the harass. He is making a sensor tower for safety against drops and pushes. Ooh. Now, what we're seeing here is really cool. I mean, this is an entire army of Terran versus just two tanks, and he's teasing him with this even. He's like, drop those tanks on I dare you, I'll just pick these up, and if your Marines come anywhere close, he's really abusing these siege tanks. Look at this, yeah. he's like, your army is literally eight times my size, but I'm just gonna drop and hit your Marines because you don't have anything on the ground. It's gonna force Bunny oh. to have, he needs to put siege tanks on the ground or he's gonna keep losing Marines to yeah. this. Yeah, this is crazy how well TY is microing, just two tanks with two medibacks. He's like outclassing him like insanely. Okay, yeah, keep those tanks, at least some of them on the ground. This is what it looks like when someone is 10 times better than their opponent. Like, <laughs> this is this is really, like, painful for poor Bunny here. Uh, I mean, he's played some great games so far, but TY really, it feels like he just has a complete grasp on what to be doing right now, whereas Bunny is floundering. Yeah. Now, TY is down slightly in supply, but he has the same worker count. They're on the same amount of bases, and he has the better upgrades. He's about to have 2-2. Two -two much faster uh, than Bunny yeah. will. Bunny will have 2-1 for a long time, plus two armor just started. Look at this, he actually has unseaged tanks in his medevacs. That's actually a smart move to drop on top of siege tanks, so uh, kind of a cute little thing. And now that he's drawn this army away, he's actually gonna do a double oh, drop, geez. one in the natural, one in the backdoor expansion. Oh, this is so crazy how, how like, TY is just toying with him. Now, here's the thing, like, TY and Bunny are actually still very close as far as you look at like the supplies. In fact, Bunny has slightly more army, but I love the moves that we're seeing out of TY here. Like he's just whittling away at Bunny here and there and everywhere. Yeah. It's almost like he's playing with his food to a certain extent with how much he's able to get done here. Yeah. I feel like the answer to what we were seeing TY do, there's two you know potentials. One is to just counteract with your siege tanks being positioned with your Marines constantly and lifting them and dropping them. The other is to just have Vikings with your army so mm -hmm. that you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a very good point. Um, well, we'll see. I mean, he's he's definitely not going the Viking route. We really haven't seen that much yet. A lot of turrets being put up right now, but he drops before those turrets actually do get up. All so right. TY continuing to do damage here, forcing a lost mining time here at the back.